So let's talk a little about what a managed bean is in our JSF application. A managed bean is a Java bean that is registered in the faces config XML file. You may remember that faces config is uh, the configuration, the main configuration file for a JSF or a Java server faces application. The faces config plays a vital role in uh, configuring a JSF application, and a managed bean um, can play a vital role in the natural syntax within a JSF application. A Java bean is a simple Java class that follows a certain design pattern. The rules of creating a piece of Java code that is Java bean code, the list of rules are very short. A Java bean has a set of properties. Each property of the bean class has at least a getter method, and if you want the property to be writable, you provide also a setter method. These getter and setter methods follow a certain naming convention within the Java bean specification. So where you have a property named x, x, y, y, uh, notice the case, um, uppercase, lowercase. If the property name is xxyy, then the method names for the getters and setters should be get xxyy or set xxyy. Optionally, if your property is of type Boolean, the get method name um, can, instead of being a get, it, uh, you can also have is, but the, the case name of the method signature, the rest remains the same. Most Developers nowadays are used to referring to getters and setters, so this option for Boolean, while still available and acceptable, is falling out of favor. The getter and setter methods mostly give us access to the member variables. They can contain arbitrary business logic, but it's not commonly done. Try to keep the data type of a property of a Java bean that's going to be used within JSF, whether it's a managed bean or not. Try to keep the data type of the property simple. It's not a requirement, um, but if you keep it simple and limit it to string or one of the primitive Java data types, uh, your life will be a lot easier. Um, it's not a requirement, and some advanced applications, as we'll see soon, uh, may make use of other property types. A Java bean can also have, in addition to the getters and setters for the properties, they can have other methods, um, business logic methods added to them as well. And there must be at least um, a one constructor, what they call zero arg or zero argument constructor. You can have other constructors, but the Java server needs to be able to have the option of serializing and instantiating all Java beans. Um, so if you're not doing anything with a constructor, you need to provide a zero arg constructor, even if that zero arg constructor simply calls the superclass uh, zero arg constructor. So why would you need something called managed beans? Managed beans are used extensively in JSF, in Java server faces. Um, they can be used to obtain form submission data using value binding. The HTTP request data can automatically be transferred via the framework calling the setter methods. The data will be transferred to the managed bean properties, so it becomes the value of the property instance. Managed beans can also be used to handle events such as a form or a hyperlink submission. They can be used to control page flow or navigational structure within our uh, web application. You can also use it to obtain a reference to a GUI component within a page. This is done by using something called component binding. Advanced programs, so not our you know simple programs, not when we're just starting out, but it is possible uh, to extend the JSF component API to um, create your own controls for a JSF UI. Um, you can programmatically control the appearance as well as the data that gets displayed by particular components.
the bulk of the programming in JSF because JSF naturally and simply uses uh, Java beans that are written as managed beans. Um, the bulk of your JSF programming generally evolves to involve um, developing managed beans. In most cases, you don't need to use any JSF specific API calls within a managed bean. Managed Bean becomes the main reason why JSF is a simpler technology than either struts or a straight servlet. Managed Beans can be developed to do most of the useful tasks, as we'll see coming up, without using any other specific API calls. So a lot of the work with Managed Beans is done using config files like Faces Config by uh, hooking these beans to particular pages. So looking at a managed bean that can act as a controller, a managed bean performs the following tasks as a controller in the model view controller architecture or pattern. It can be used to transfer HTTP request data to Java objects that the model layer can work with. Much of this part of the work is, uh, is automated by the faces servlet um, in the JSF implementation during what's called uh, the update model values phase in the JSF implementation. Managed beans can invoke the model layer and can have event handler methods. From an event handler method, a managed bean can initiate whatever business logic is necessary by invoking the appropriate model layer method. For example, it can invoke a stateless session EJB method if necessary. It can control the page flow. An event handler can return an outcome string that can be used by the faces servlet to determine the flow um, or the JSP file that forms the reply to the request. So again, the, the controller in an MVC architecture is the traffic cop, if you will, receiving the request, directing traffic to specific areas for specific flows. So a uh, managed bean can control the checkout flow of a store, such as going from shipping to billing to confirm to thank you. In the example, I guess, breadcrumb trail here that they're showing us. And before branching from billing to confirm to thank you, any one piece of that whole controller layer before we render the uh, re entire response can involve uh, loading and instantiating instances of data objects um, from the model layer. So how is it that you configure a managed bean to be part of your JSF application? You do this by registering the managed bean. The managed bean tag is used in uh, the JSF config file, which by default is called faces-config XML. You register each managed bean using the managed bean tag um, for each piece of Java bean code. You register it in uh, faces config. By default, in a JSF application, the application server is looking for faces-config.xml in the web INF subdirectory. Alternatively, you can specify a comma-separated list of file names as a value of javax.faces.config files as a context parameter in web XML, so you're specifying an alternative to faces config XML. This is generally used by JSF developers who are incorporating um, additional features to their traditional JSF implementation, and they don't want to or shouldn't, in, in most opinions according to best practices, they shouldn't be trying to replace the server's implementation or their customer's implementation of JSF. So alternatively, if you need to add or extend um, 
features in the standard JSF implementation. It's quite extensible and you can add it, but you've got the disconnect between what the developer wants to do and features that the developer wants to put in their JSF application and what the customer is willing to support in their JSF implementation on the application server where your developed application has to run alongside of other applications that the end customer needs to manage on the uh, server. So this is a good alternative. It's always best practice if you're going to extend JSF to try and stick to the solutions that are um, application specific. So the system's looking for a default faces config. You have an alternative if you need to build uh, multiple configuration files. But we'll stick with faces-config.xml for most of our samples. A managed bean is also defined by using certain other XML elements. The managed bean name element also specifies, obviously, the name that the application is going to use to refer to the Java bean instance. The fully qualified name for the Java bean Java class is in an element called managed bean class. The scope of the managed bean. You have um, four choices for defining the scope of the managed bean. The bean instance can be at application scope, at session scope, at request scope, or at none. So you can actually control via this uh, element the managed bean scope, the actual visibility of the instance of your Java bean. So what's the life cycle of a managed bean within the JSF implementation? A managed bean is referenced within a JSP or a faces config file by the name um, that we specified in the config file for the managed bean name. Whenever a managed bean needs to be used, in other words, when it's referenced, the system looks for it by its name as defined within the scope of the bean in uh, the bean scope in the faces config. If the bean instance cannot be found, then the system is looking to create a new instance of the bean using the zero arg constructor. Um, so the system needs to be able to instantiate that bean using the zero arg constructor. Whatever properties are specified for the bean are then initialized using values that um, you can specify in the faces config XML file when you define the managed beam. We'll look in a little more detail in a, just a minute. The bean instance is then stored in its respective scope. Initializing a managed beam under your control, adding properties, helping out the system, overriding what the system is going to do by default. You can initialize the properties of a managed bean with default values. You can do this in one of two ways. You can set the values from the bean class 0 R constructor if you want to. You can also set values in the faces configuration file. If you apply default values in the config file, then the system applies them after the instance is created and you don't uh, have the necessity for actually calling the setters from inside of the constructor or setting the properties inside of the constructor. Um, this is only done once per instance um, if, it, if you're doing it from the config file. If you're going to set default values um, for a managed bean or for managed bean properties using faces config, for each property use a managed property element. Supply the name of the property using the property name element and supply the value using the value element. So property name and value are child elements of managed property. What scope should you use? There are some best practices and advice and some things to consider when considering how to scope your bean instances. If the properties of the bean need to be used from multiple HTTP requests, then use session scope. For example, 
multi-step wizard type page flow, you can accumulate user input in a single bean instance, storing it in session instead of request. Generally, you should try to use the request scope. The instance is dereferenced at the end of request processing. The instance is short lived. This, of course, reduces memory requirements and makes you more friends um, on the system administration side um, for the system administrators that need to manage the overall server resources. You can also use the application scope. If the Bean instance needs to be shared by all users of this application, okay, that scope is also available to you. Let's talk about binding the values um, in Manage Beans. A Java object can be bound to a GUI component within JSF a GUI component as the data model, in other words, as the data that is associated with the particular component. Usually, we're talking about a property of a managed bean that is bound to a particular GUI component. When the component is rendered, the JSF system renders the property value as the output data for that particular component. When the form is submitted, the component within the uh, JSF framework transfers the new input data to the property value for the bean instance. This is done during what the JSF system calls the update model values phase. Value binding is specified using a JSF expression. JSF expression slightly different than the JSP expression language. So this is done using a JSF expression as the value attribute of an HTML tag, but the special HTML tags that are derived from the JSF HTML tags. So for example, an uh, output text element, notice the H prefixed, and the value field the JSF expression as bean instance name, in this case address dot first name, is requesting to render as the value the first name property curly brackets pound sign in front of the curly brackets. This is a key that it's a JSF expression and not a, a JSP expression language expression, which is very uh, similar. This output label will then, as this element in my uh, JSF, JSP, will display, in this case, first name. For input text, um, the value element is being used. Same expression. When the uh, screen is displayed, the text box will be pre-filled with the current value, or null, if it is, um, or not null, but empty. Um, if it is in fact empty. When the form is submitted, the system updates the property in the bean instance with what the user has entered. So a little diagram of what this might look like if to help you visually see what's going on here. You have a form, you have two input elements, a first name and a last name. Um, so when the form is rendered, the JSF system is looking at the Java Bean instance. If the Java Bean instance is flagged as a managed bean, um, the system itself is looking for the properties of first name, the properties of last name, and either using those current values to render the form or taking the values from the user when the form is submitted and populating or calling the setters on the Java Bean instance, calling the setters back in the JSF system. Because we're talking about the system doing some of the passing from HTTP requests to Java Bean instance, there's a few rules of the road here um, that we need to pay attention to. URL parameters are always sent as plain strings in the HTTP request. If the associated bean property is also of type Java string, the system simply copies the data, no worries there. Otherwise, the system does try to perform data conversion. If the bean property is Java primitives int, byte, short, long, float, double, or the corresponding wrapper type in Java, such as integer, 
or double with the capital D, the system would then call the value of method, which is implemented on all of these wrapper classes, um, it would call the value of method of the particular wrapper type to convert the data as necessary. Uh, for example, integer, calling the static method value of string, and the data is passed in as the string argument, the incoming data from the request. The value is zero if the string is empty. So uh, converting it to integer is no problem. If the property is Boolean or Boolean, the system would then call value of on the Java Boolean object to convert the data. The string value true converts to true. The case is ignored since we're talking about Boolean. Anything else, including the word yes, converts to false um, for the system. Few of the more complex or advanced property types. A property can be another Java bean. It can be a list. It can be an array. It can be a map or any of those uh, objects. However, keep in mind that not all property types can be associated with all input components. Why? Because they don't convert very well. If the managed beans property is another Java bean, just like you would in any um, JSP expression language in Java, you can use the dot notation to associate a property of the subbean to a component. So for example, here we see uh, the value field set to something um, that looks like the dot notation address dot user dot first name. In this case, the subbean property has to be initialized with an object. So in this particular example, the address instance, uh, the address managed bean would actually have to have a reference to the user object, and I assume that it's a bean. Um, so that would have to be instantiated within the object itself, within the address bean in this example. Some UI components can be associated with array or map items. As we would traditionally do, we would use the customary square bracket notation for these items to improve readability of our code. The dot notation also works, but it's often difficult to see the difference between instances with simple property types versus instances or bean names with array or map items. So that's why most people prefer to use the customary square brackets. So for example, here we have, um, again, using the JSF HTML elements, select one menu, and um, the selection item or the uh, JSF select item elements, each one of them is using uh, from something called country list. And so we're using the square bracket notation to um, reference the index position or sub subscript, depending on what you call it. I call them index. Component binding. JSF does provide a Java class for each component type. So for example, we looked at input text. There actually is in the JSF uh, API in the implementation um, a class called HTML input text. Advanced JSF programs can directly manipulate these components by calling the methods that are available on these components. You can use something called component binding if you want to associate a managed beam property to the component object instead of using the value um, or the input value of a particular component. The association is done using the binding attribute instead of the value attribute, the binding attribute of a particular HTML tag. Here we see an example uh, with input text, the binding element. It looks, it, the expression looks exactly the same, but instead of using value, we're actually using binding. If the property is settable, then the system saves the reference of the GUI control in the property instead of just the value.
if the getter method returns a non-null GUI object, then the system will then use that to render the control of the JSF tag in the rendering of the view. This type of binding is used when the JSF API is also used to manipulate or extend the appearance of a GUI control. There are other binding types. Method binding is used to specify the name of an event handler, uh, an event handler method. So for example, here we have an event uh, action on a particular button. We're specifying our event handler method as the value for the action attribute on our button. So we're using the JSF HTML command button type submit value address. The action is actually the name in JSF expression language of a method on this bean called address and that becomes our event handler method. For output only components you can also concatenate multiple values for value binding. So if you're using the value attribute in this example, hello user first name comma user last name. Um, so you can concatenate these together and string them together in one long value attribute. So let's go take a look in Eclipse at creating a JSF application and using some of these basic features and work with Manage Beans. So let's create a simple JSF application with a Manage Bean. I'm going to right click in the Project Explorer view and create a new dynamic web project. The name will be simply JSF Web. The key piece of using this wizard is that I make sure that the configuration is for a Java Server Faces 1.2 project um, and that will create our Faces config for us and put us in that configuration framework. In the third screen of this wizard, um, it is the default, but I always like to double check that the selection is made to generate the web XML as well. Um, for what it is that we need. So we're finished here. We click Finish. Okay. So we've got our uh, simple project. It doesn't have any code in it yet, but that's okay. That's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new package to um, handle and organize and store our Java Bean code, our Manage Bean code. Okay. Um, so I'll create a simple Java package com dot my com dot beans just to organize our bean code. If I expand web content, if I look in web INF, I have a basic faces config XML. This version of Eclipse has a fancy editor on top of faces dash config XML. But I can also view by using the last tab of this editor, I can see the XML source. So let's get to work. I want a simple JSP um, just to demonstrate and see and learn uh, managed beans inside of JSF. So I want a simple JSP that I can interact with. I'll create a new JSP file and we'll call it intro. JSP and um, on the second screen I'll make sure that I'm using the JSF template which gives me some basic elements um, as well as the tag lib directives that I need. It gives me some basic uh, tags for working with JSF JSPs. A lot of letters there. Now what do I want my intro JSP to do? It's going to be very simple. Just render um, some content. So I'll copy and paste it and we'll look through uh, what it is that we want to do. 
Uh, did I copy the view? No, I didn't. Okay. So I want to make sure I paste it in the right place because otherwise we're troubleshooting things um, that we don't need to. So I have a reference to a user bean using the JSF syntax. I'm using JSF tags, input text, and output text. And I'm using the value attributes to reference um, a managed bean. A, I haven't created the bean yet. I haven't configured the managed bean within my JSF application. So if I try to save this, I should get an error. Oh, no, I'm not getting any error. Look at that. Tool's not even telling me that this bean doesn't exist yet, but it should. So if you get a little yellow warning that says, um, you know, I have no idea what this is. Um, that's okay, because we haven't put all the working parts into place yet. Now, the bean that I want to use as my uh, managed bean is a simple Java bean, okay? And I've already uh, written it. It's um, the right package. That's good. Uh, no zero arg constructor, and I really should have one. Um, but I only have one property of the bean, first name, and that's what my JSP is looking for is first name. Now, uh, for output text, I'm binding a method greeting label text. Um, so it's actually not looking for a property there. It's looking for a method. So this is a demonstration of method binding as well. Um, within my method, I'm actually using the first name attribute and returning a string or returning another string that says, please enter your name. So everything's going to be handled within this one JSP. And I'm kind of putting some logic that I really, rendering logic that I really shouldn't be putting in the bean code. But I want to focus right now on seeing how these managed beans work. So generally, I wouldn't use the backing Java code to handle the rendering. That would be done in the JSP itself. But that's OK. Uh, it gives us an idea that we can actually manipulate the re rendering and return a value from these uh, methods. And uh, we're good to go. So I can uh, drag this file into Eclipse or copy and paste it into a file um, for speed and understanding. I think I'm just going to drag it in. So uh, from the right folder, I've got my greeting bean Java, which I just uh, showed you. And in Windows Explorer, I can drag it right into my Eclipse package, com.mycom.beans. It asks me if I want to copy the files. I say, OK. So just to double check and make sure that I don't have any build errors, this is the exact same code we looked at in Notepad. Uh, so that's fine. But I'm still not quite ready to use this uh, JSP to render a bean instance, even though the Java code is there. Um, what I need to do is configure a managed bean in the faces config XML. So if I open this, I have two choices. I can use the managed bean tab, which gives me a little more user-friendly, intuitive interface into the XML source, and you're free to use it. So I want to put this bean at application scope or at request scope. I'll put it in application scope. If I click Add here, I want to uh, use my existing Java class, which is the greeting bean Java that I just dragged in. I can browse from here and begin typing greeting bean and of course it discovers it because it's in the same application and I populate it. In the next screen um, it asks me to verify what the scope is and notice the greeting name. Okay, That's not how our JSP is using it and, and the window is hidden. But uh, let's let it have the wrong name and then we'll go and uh, fix it in the source or in this wizard. But if you remember, our JSP is actually looking for a bean instance by its name, um, greeting or greetings, uh, whatever it was. Um, but we'll have to verify that. Click Next. It's just a summary screen. Uh, finish. 
and notice that my faces config needs to be saved. Okay, um, the application scope, and of course you can change any of this if you need to. You can change the manage bean class. You can change the bean name. You can change it. Uh, you can save it. But notice our JSP is looking for uh, greeting, not greeting bean. Okay, so it's looking for the instance name to be greeting. So I could test this and watch it fail so that you could see how it's going to fail. Just trust me, it's going to fail. Um, the JSP won't be able to be rendered or it'll be rendered. Actually, it will probably fail to render because it's looking for a bean uh, with a different name. So it's not going to find the underlying Java code at all. So I can fix this in um, this editor. Let's look at the source since the samples we looked at showed the XML source. Um, this is what the XML source looks like, even though I use the fancier, more intuitive editor. And of course, I can fix this uh, greeting instance name. This name, greeting, is matched to this bean class at this scope. My JSP does not reference a scope, but remember in the rendering of a JSP, the system is going to look for instances in um, in a certain order. It's going to look in uh, request, it's going to look in application, it's going to look in session in that order. Um, so if it doesn't find the bean instance with that name, it's going to throw a pretty serious error on the server. Um, if it doesn't find the property value or if the property value is null, it will um, simply send an empty string or send nothing um, to the uh, client when it's rendered. Okay. So what we're matching in faces config on this is this name to how it is that we're using it. Okay. So let's see how it works. Our server is stopped. We want to add our new application, JSF Web. We want to add that to our server test environment. It's already there. Let's remove anything that we don't want to use um, for this particular test just for speed and for error conflicts. I'm sure you're not going to have any errors, but sometimes I have errors. And if I'm only interested in testing one application, I don't want to be troubleshooting applications that are being published to the server that I'm not interested in running on this particular test. Sometimes there are dependencies on applications and I want more than one loaded. All of that is, of course, possible. But the only one I'm interested in running is uh, this JSF application, JSF Web. Okay, So uh, when my server publishes, it should unpublish anything that was there last time it was started um, and publish my new application. So to uh, run this, I can right click on the JSP, do run as, run on server. I can start the server, watch the publish if, um, if I want to do that separate from the server startup itself. Um, but we'll just uh, go with as few clicks as possible for this particular section. So right click, run as, run on server, and we'll watch the server. Uh, it does a build. Right, we're watching the JBoss build of our application, and that's successful. Actually, we're watching two builds because now it's notice it's undeploying uh, the other application that I ran, and now we're watching the server start up. And what we should see once the server starts up and it loads our application is we should see the intro JSP. While we're looking at the HTML, notice we've got an input field and an output label, essentially, um, in our simple JSP. And when we submit this form, um, the message should change based on the code. Let's just double check. Based on the code in our get greeting label, right? So if first name is not null, first name is greater than uh, zero, return one message. Otherwise, return please enter your name. And that's what we're seeing here, okay? So if I enter my name Susan and submit, I get 
greeting from Manage Bean, hello, Susan. I click the back button. Susan has a value and it's populated in the field, but the message is cleared out because the Manage Bean instance um, has been handled in the session. Uh, the JSF 1.2 implementation is very much what they refer to as uh, back button friendly. So this is a new feature of JSF 1.2. And when you hear developers out in uh, the development land refer to this as a new feature, means that it's back button friendly. It kind of leads you to believe that maybe the previous versions of JSF were not so much back button friendly. In other words, they didn't really keep the state of the bean as well as we would expect. So let's see um, what's going on on the server console to make sure we're not getting multiple hits, multiple instances. Nothing has changed since the application was actually loaded. Uh, change the name to, let's say, John. Submit, right? We can then change it again. Zach, submit. And you see how we get relatively fast response. We wrote no real unusual Java code that wasn't standard Java bean code. And the only thing we needed to do in our uh, faces config in our faces application is make reference to a Java class as a managed bean. We scoped it at the application level and, and we already talked about the different options for scoping uh, the bean. But we just declared that some bean instance of this name is going to be managed within our application. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of uh, how managed beans, even simple managed beans, are uh, configured in a JSF application and how the system uses the natural specifications of a Java bean as a managed bean so that it can make uh, your user interface easier to develop and more user friendly and powerful for the uh, rendering for the end customer. It's awesome.